Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Dwyer in here. Welcome back to another 25 days of Go. Uh, today we will be going over a proverb again, and in this particular proverb, I'm going to be using one of my games as an example, which is why it's uh, here. Well, that's why I'm here currently here on TaiChem with uh, this board happily in front of everybody. And this proverb, you may have heard it uh, referred to multiple ways. Uh, the most common one, I think, is that greed for a win takes the win away. Now, the idea here is actually quite simple. Uh, and that is, if you are really, really, really trying to kill something, and you're kind of like investing everything on trying to kill something, uh, chances are you're being a little bit too greedy and that thing is likely not going to die and any hope you had of winning the game also is going to uh, disappear at that. Since it kind of ties into the whole dragon uh, proverb that we went over not too long ago and how big dragons usually don't die, I was not entirely certain if I was actually going to go over this particular, set, uh, particular proverb, but I figured, you know what, it has another application that's worth going over it uh, because of that and that is when you are ahead right you like territorially maybe you killed something whatever there the game usually doesn't end especially in amateur games and like drag out and drag out and drag out but unfortunately that means new issues are going to arise new complications are going to arise new opportunities are going to arise and occasionally you kind of have to fight that impulse to get into something complicated again because you don't have to. I mean, your opponent wants you to because they're losing. And if you like give them what they're looking for, maybe you just like blow a one game. I and mean, we've all been there. I will go ahead and say right now uh, for further information on the idea of like keeping a game one, you may want to actually look at a book, one of the only books that I actually have, and that is Go Sagan's Winning a One Game. Even like some of the strongest professional players uh, like ever have definitely had to, you know, be really, really interested in this idea of keeping a game one and he put our book out. Uh, so you might want to check that out if this topic interests you and you want further reading on the subject. Uh, winning a one game by Go Sagan is one I would definitely recommend. Uh, that said, let's look at this game really quickly. So I was uh, black. Yes, I would never do this. <laughs> I was black. Now, uh, my opponent isn't the strongest player in the history of the world. You can see he gave me two lovely enclosures here. You can't really ask for better than that. And he's trying to adopt this really bizarre strategy. This is a lot of times where you often see this particular proverb coming into play. People who are trying to do bizarre things against you, and you accidentally kind of get mixed up in it. So here he's just trying to do really, really bizarre stuff. I'm just taking corners. Pretty easy. I'm actually ahead territorially right now, because he's got like the corner, an extension, and probably an extension, so I see no reason even to pincer here. Like in the back of my head, I'm already trying to like adhere to that proverb of I don't have to do anything weird right now. He's the one that has to make up the point, so he's kind of like just hemorrhaging, right? So I just back off. I'm trying to be careful, following up things that he's ignoring. Nothing, no big deal. This is where all of his territory is coming from so far. This, this hope. So I approach. He doesn't try to take territory here. He just pincers me. Uh, I would never like play this. Because, I mean, what is this doing? Going back and playing that? Not good. I got nothing out of this exchange, and he's like picking up solid points. I would never jump out at one here. I don't recommend you do either. He already took the corner because he's trying to make all of these low stones uh, be influential, which is not really a very good idea. So, as you can see here, it's pretty straightforward in that White's trying to figure out how not to lose this game, right? Admittedly, I played this game on stream and I went to Co simply because everybody on my stream knows that I suck at Co. So they thought I was going to back off of it and I didn't. Don't hold this Co against me. But I was determined to win it. <laughs> very, very bad reason. I don't really care about the sequence if I say you can't kill me. 
Uh, you could try, but it doesn't work. But what gets interesting is after all of this, right, and he's reduced and he's losing a lot for himself. As you can see here, like he can't hold this in if he tries. Um, I mean, how do you keep everything dead? You can't, right? This or this is dead, so game over, right? So he has to give that up. And then this connects up and I figure, all right, game over. Game over. He plays away. And this is where I break the proverb in half. A lot of you probably know what I'm about to do. It might even be an okay move to play, but it's not one that I actually have to play. Like right now I can see, okay, we got to kill some stuff, nice. We've got some corner, whatever that is. We've got some corners, okay. We're, we seem to be doing all right. He's just struggling to keep uh, his weak points in check. If I think I'm ahead territorially, all I have to do is just secure myself. But you can see that's not what I'm doing. I'm attaching. Why am I attaching? Is it to attack this group? No, we know that's not, that's not what we're doing. We're leaning on this because we're going after more. I'm ahead and I'm being greedy. This might be a completely okay thing to play, but I want to stress again, I don't need to play this. I could just play here let him do, I don't know, something, there's a weak point here, but whatever. Let him do something to connect up and then just be happy with myself. That's all I really have to do. Something straightforward, not complicated at all. That's, that's all I have to do, right? But I don't do that because I'm greedy and I want to kill him on an even larger scale than I am now. So I'm going after these three stones. Now, legitimately, these things might be able to die. But unfortunately, on stream, during complicated situations, mistakes are made. So now instead of that, I suddenly have to go back and connect here. I suddenly have to worry about the stones that just got killed. And I suddenly then also have to worry about the cut points that have been created. I gave him so much right now, because despite being ahead, Despite being ahead, I decided that we were going to keep trying to get further and further ahead by being greedy and trying to kill things. So right here is an example of where greed for the win can definitely take that win away. I mean, I'm trying to pick up some points because I know I just lost so many here with the, with the loss of these stones. And I'm not even feeling the full effect of what this could come into yet. Plus, there's that still. But the damage is there. I have to go back and patch things up because I'm suddenly worried about myself and how much territory I have. He's just harassing me and trying to reduce me constantly because he knew I made a big mistake too. And with every move he makes, he's kind of shrinking what I have. And as a result, this game, that wasn't going it all bad for me and wasn't really even that close suddenly winds up in a 2.5 match now i did win this game but it was barely won i could have easily lost this in endgame i could have easily lost this if he had seen a larger point to take elsewhere those two points could have made the difference and if i had lost it would be because I was greedy. It's because back here, yeah, back here, when I have a clear shot to just defend what I have, right? Take nice big corners, leave him alone, maybe, 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 maybe cut later. Maybe just cut this later, depending on how he plays. Instead of that, I'm giving him territory by attaching. And then I just invited him to kill my stones. 
It's like, yep, I didn't want, I, I didn't want them anyway. You can, you can just take them. You can take them all for yourself. It's fine. And there you have it. I was greedy. Greed for the win takes the win away. This case, it didn't. But it's only by sheer luck that it didn't. If anything, I think this is probably one of the proverbs that amateurs tend to break the most often, because they're not always as sure when they're ahead, so they keep doing uh, crazy things, or they just kind of get caught up in the flow of the game and they keep doing crazy things, or they're just greedy and want to kill everything and they, they do crazy things. It's definitely something that I get wrapped up in a lot uh, when I'm streaming, because, you know, you want to put up a good show, and what's better than just killing everything, right? But no, this proverb is definitely one you want to look out for. Definitely one you want to try to avoid breaking, especially if the game, like, really, really matters. Like, that one game to rank up, and you're greedy, so you don't. Or that, like, one game in a tournament, but you're greedy, so you lose your tournament. I mean, there's a lot of different places where this just gets broken over and over and over again. You want to be aware of these things. You definitely want to be aware of these things. So I hope you guys are a little bit more aware of these things. And I'll be back tomorrow with, uh, let's see, that's the 24th, I want to say. Yeah, I think that's day 24. Yeah, should be day 24. Day 24. We're almost done. Hope you guys are having a great holiday. I know I've said that repeatedly, and I will continue to do so. And I'll, of course, see you guys tomorrow. Take care, everyone.